Remember on the first video that we emphasize that the problem in heart failure because of myocardial injury, the heart fails to meet the demands of the tissues, peripheral tissues or peripheral systems. Kay failing man karon ang heart, weak karon ang heart, magpump or magcontract kasi nga less yung ventricular performance, gamay ra ang iya hangga kahatag na dugo sa different parts of the body. Kasi nga, with lesser ventricular performance, decrease ngayon yung cardiac output. And because of decrease of cardiac output, there are certain compensatory mechanisms occurs. Particularly, yung compensatory mechanism na yun is yung neurohumoral uh, mechanism. In which, yung katawan natin gumagawa or nagsesecrete, nagre-release ng mga compounds that can somehow save the problem or initially save the heart. However, because of the vicious circle, because of this vicious circle, na-present ko to no, sa part 1 ng heart failure, nagkakaroon ngayon ng declining, declining performance of the heart. Because of excessive production of angiotensin 2, diba? endothelin, um, uh, norepinephrine, and even uh, natriuretic peptides. And these compounds, these compounds, remember, they can enhance burden diba? sa heart. Where they can enhance workload sa heart. That is why... Yung goals natin, yung goals that we need to attain with the use of drugs are the following. So, number one, dapat we have to increase this myocardial contraction. Kailangan natin i-increase yung isang problema na lesser yung ventricular performance. So, kailangan natin i-increase, enhance yung force of cardiac contraction. Kasi of course, via increasing the force of cardiac contraction, it is realized na tataas ang stroke volume. Tataas yung stroke volume. And therefore, pagtaas yung stroke volume, di ba taas yung cardiac output. Again, kung taas yung stroke volume, taas yung amount or volume ng blood being pumped out per contraction, per contract. And with that, the heart will now be able to give more blood to the different parts of the body. Another goal is to decrease the workload, to decrease the workload of the heart. Kasi, Problema yung burden, problema yung pagtaas ng workload sa heart. So, another goal natin in the treatment of heart failure is via lowering the workload of the heart. And this could happen via altering these production or release of endogenous compensatory compounds like norepinephrine, endothelin, angiotensin 2, etc., etc. Because with such alteration, we can decrease the burden in the heart. And so, by decreasing burden felt by the heart, dako ang chance na ang heart could meet now the demands ng different, uh, different parts ng body or different tissues ng body. So, with that, let us discuss the drugs that can be used for heart failure. Now, we can classify the drugs depending on the goal that they want to attain to target. So, we can classify them into two groups. Again, this is based on the goal na na-present kanina kung anong goal yung kaya nilang i-attain. Number one, First group are said to be the positive inotropes or the positive inotropic agents. 
Sa mga positive inotropic agents, this group of drugs, ang ilahang goal is yung first on the list. Ganina na slide. So that is to increase the force of cardiac contraction. Kasi nga, from the word inotropy, recall na ang inotropy has something to do with the strength of the force of cardiac contraction. Therefore, kapag positive, inotropic, ang isang drug or positive inotrope siya, it can enhance, it can increase the force of myocardial contraction. Okay? And this includes the following. We have cardiac glycosides, beta agonists, and the, bi the bipyridines. The second group are the so-called agents without inotropic effects. Specifically, these are what we call unloader medications. Again, this group of agents are said to be unloader medications. Particularly, these are preload and afterload unloaders. Again, take note. This particular group of drugs, they are considered preload and afterload unloaders. Kumbaga, uh, nila lesser nila, dinedecrease nila yung workload ng heart. So, unloader medications, because they alter the neurohumoral mechanisms, ibig sabihin yung second goal, kanina na slide, yung ina-attain nila. So, they alter the vicious circle or yung vicious cycle. So, by altering the vicious circle, lesser na yun yung workload and therefore less burden to the heart. So, under this, we have diuretics, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, vasodilators, and beta blockers. Kung inyuhang madumduman, di ba na-introduce ko naman tong mga drugs na to, and basically, these are all anti-hypertensives, ba? Ito sila lahat na introduce ko na under anti-hypertensive agents. And for heart failure, take note, for heart failure, these agents, these agents are the first line therapies for the management of a chronic heart failure. Now, aside from the standard, aside from the standard agents that we just discussed uh, sa previous slide, we also have this miscellaneous inotropic drugs. First drug, we have the isteroxime. Isteroxime, this particular drug inhibits sodium-potassium ATPase pump. And also, it facilitates sequestration of calcium by the SR. So, when we say inhibits, inhibits sodium-potassium ATPase, na-discuss ko to, di ba? In which, ang sodium-potassium ATPase, isa siyang pump responsible for calcium extrusion. Yan yung responsibility or job ng sodium-potassium ATPase pump. Responsible siya sa paglabas ng calcium from the cardiac cell. And so again, ang ginagawa ni isteroxime, binablock niya. Okay? Binablock niya yung uh, paglabas ng calcium extrusion. Binablock niya yung pump sodium-potassium ATPase. And Take note, inhibition of this pump, that will prevent calcium extrusion. That is why, as a result, more calcium ion is observed inside the cardiac cell. Thus, enhancing cardiac contraction. Okay? So, mas madiscuss na to ni na principle later sa digoxin, sa digoxin, which is isa ding inotropic agent. So, somehow, ang ilahang principle sa ilahang mechanism of action na sila'y 
similarity. Okay, so tandaan, inotropic agent din siya. And then, levosimendan. Levosimendan naman, this agent is a calcium sensitizer. Again, this agent is said to be a calcium sensitizer. Now, this figure, this figure summarizes agents that can be used for heart failure. Again, this figure, this summarizes the agents, the drugs that can be used for uh, heart failure. Okay, so it is not only sila tag sa tag sa later. For example, we have the inotropic agents like digoxin. Okay, ang digoxin, it addresses the problem of reduced cardiac output. Kasi nga, positive inotrope siya. Pag positive inotrope, yung drug, di ba, increase ngayon ang force of cardiac contraction. So, kung enhance ngayon yung strength ng cardiac contraction, yung pumping ng heart, dadami ang amount ng blood that will be ejected. Thus, ina-address na yung problema na baba yung cardiac output. Kasi yung ginagawa ni Dijuxin, ina-enhance, ina-increase yung cardiac output via increasing, enhancing the force of contraction. Same thing with this part also. Uh, tinatarget niya yung cardiac output. And as we recall, because of the neurohumoral mechanisms, there is increase in sympathetic activation. And because of sympathetic activation, nagkaka-enhance workload ang puso. Nagkaka-enhance burden ang puso. So, para ma-address ang problem na to, we have anti-hypertensives. So, we have anti-hypertensive drugs like beta blockers. Okay, that would particularly inhibit the beta-mediated renin activation. Again, for the beta blockers here, they particularly inhibit the beta-mediated renin activation and secretion. And we also have the vasodilators to target diba, the, or alter, of course, the vasoconstriction. And those that would inhibit naman cardiac remodeling, including fluid retention, we have drugs like ARBs, the angiotensin receptor blockers here. And we also have the ACE inhibitors as well here. And of course, yung mga diuretics. Okay. So, isa-isa ho na to na sila discuss. Again, I repeat, ang point is, yung nagpapalakas ng tibok ng puso, yung nag -e enhance nag -e increase ng force, strength, of cardiac contraction, yun yung mga inotropes. Yun yung mga inotropes. Kung nagta-target naman sa neuro-humoral mechanisms, yung regarding sa release ng or secretion ng mga endogenous compounds like norepi, endothelin, angiotensin 2, okay, ang um, drugs naman, that could target them, that particular mechanism na nag -e enhance ng burden sa heart is mga anti-hypertensives naman. So, at this juncture, let us begin discussing positive inotropic agents. Under this, again, we have three major groups. So, na-introduce ko kanina yung table. We have the ba the cardiac glycoside, yung cardiac glycoside, yung beta agonists, yung beta one receptor stimulants, then yung bipyridines, ba yung bipyridines. Now this figure, this particular figure, 
summarizes the action held by positive inotropes. Particularly, nakafocus diri ang action ng cardiac glycoside. Ang cardiac glycoside, and that is the digoxin. Okay? So, take note. The digoxin, which is under cardiac glycoside, it targets the sodium potassium ATP pump here. Ayan. So, later discuss na to. What's gonna happen if na target ang sodium potassium ATP? But somehow, familiar na mo sa action ng digoxin. Kaya na-introduce naman to na ako si digoxin during sa lecture 1 sa review. Diba? We also have here the calcium sensitizers. Mm -mm. That could enhance the activity of calcium ion in the actin tropomyosin troponin complex. And then we also have the beta agonists that would enhance the entry of the trigger calcium. Alright? So, ato ni silang tag sa tag sa on ug discuss. So, we will start with the first on the list of positive inotropes, and that is the cardiac glycosides. Cardiac glycosides, if you recall in your pharmacognosy notes, these are uh, the ones that are isolated from the digitalis species. So, we have two major examples ng digitalis. We have digoxin and digitoxin. For uh, digitoxin, uh, this is no longer used. This is no longer used nowadays because of its a longer pharmacokinetic profile. Again, yung digitoxin. This is no longer used okay, because of its longer pharmacokinetic profile. Pag longer kasi yung pharmacokinetic ng drug, we tend to realize that the drug is more toxic. So, dako ang chance of having toxicity effects. That is why it is no longer used, yung digitoxin. The cardiac glycoside that is available, that is still available commercially, is yung digoxin. Okay? Digoxin, digoxin. Okay? Particularly, this was isolated from the species digitalis lanata. Digitalis lanata. Or the white foxglove. Now, ang question... Ang question ngayon, bakit? Bakit kaya uh, ang digitoxin, digot, I mean, digoxin, sorry, bakit yung digoxin, isa siyang positive, inotropic agent? So, explain na to. Karon, ang iyahang mechanism of action. Why this cardiac glycoside, digoxin, digoxin, is considered an inotropic agent nagpapa enhance ng strength or force of cardiac contraction si digoxin digoxin this is a drug that inhibit uh, the pump sodium potassium ATPase now ang sodium potassium ATPase ay kalat yan sa katawan but based on research, ang digoxin in particular, pinakataas ang iyahang blocking action or antagonizing action, inhibition action sa sodium potassium ATPs that is present in the heart, that is present in the cardiac myocyte. Now, para magets Ang mechanism of action ng digoxin, we have to recall first the job of sodium-potassium ATPase pump. 
Okay? So, na-discuss ko sa part 1, na-discuss ko sa part 1, under sa normal cardiac contractility, di ba? I have mentioned na one way for the heart to relax normally is via the activation of this sodium potassium ATPase. Okay? Kasi nga, with this pump, recall, now with this pump na sodium potassium ATPase, it promotes calcium extrusion. Calcium extrusion. Ang paglabas, ang paggawas sa calcium ion from the cardiac cell. So, i-recall na to. Giunsa to ang calcium extrusion. For instance, we have here, ito, ito yung sodium, potassium ATPase pump. Remember, for this pump, it allows entry of two ions ng potassium ion in exchange of this three ions of sodium. Okay? So, take note, kapag activated ha, wala pang gamot. Uh, recall sa na to, ang sodium potassium ATP pump na job. Kapag activated yung sodium potassium ATP na ay entry of two ions ng potassium, lalabas ang three ions ng sodium. So, labas ang sodium ion. Now, once ang sodium potassium ATP ay activated, eventually, Activated din to. Activated din yung NCX or yung sodium calcium exchanger. Ang NCX naman, it allows, it allows the exchange of this sodium ion and calcium ion. So that is, sodium and, uh, yung sodium ion kanina na lumabas, it will enter back in the cardiac myocyte in exchange of this calcium ion. So, lalabas ultimately ang calcium ion. So, lumalabas again yung calcium ion kapag activated itong sodium potassium ATP. So, yun yung calcium extrusion nangyayari. Okay? Therefore, Kapag ma-activate, kapag na-activate yung sodium potassium ATPase na pump, bumababa yung calcium ion sa loob ng cell. Kaya nga, ang sodium potassium ATPase pump, it causes relaxation ng cardiac cell. Yan yung normal cardiac relaxation, which is na-discuss naman natin sa uh, normal physiology ng cardiac contractility. Now, karon i-introduce na ako ang drug na digoxin. Or, in particular, in general, yung cardiac glycoside. Ang digoxin, uh -uh, ang digoxin, it blocks this pump. Sodium potassium ATP pump. Basabi inhibits sodium potassium ATP pump. Okay, so ibig sabihin kapag block yung sodium potassium ATP, walang papasok na potassium ion, walang lalabas na sodium ion. So mananatili yung sodium ion sa loob ng cell. Okay, and once inhibited once inhibited yung pump na yan, we can actually realize na itong NCX, yung sodium potash, uh, sodium calcium exchanger, yung sodium calcium exchanger, uh, will be rendered inactive as well. So, walang lalabas na calcium ion. Kumbaga, walang extrusion of calcium with digoxin. That is why, Kung titingnan mo yung illustration, inside ng cell, calcium ion are being retained. Thus, pag marami kasi yung calcium ion in the cytoplasm, 
in the intracellular membrane, uh, it will enhance interaction of this calcium into the troponin. Okay? Thus, with this troponin calcium complex, greater ngayon yung contraction promoting positive inotropic effects. Kaya may nakalagay dyan, increase inotropy. Kasi nga, yung intracellular calcium ion inside the cell, tumataas yung level. Kasi nga, na-inhibit yung mechanism na paglabas ng calcium ion sa cell. So, yan yung mechanism of action ng digoxin. Sige nga, itest natin. Itest natin kung nasabtan. Okay, kapag gumamit ang tao ng digoxin, kumusta? Kumusta ang intra cellular calcium ion? Kumusta yung intracellular calcium ion? Taas or baba? Okay, taas. What about the intra cellular sodium ion? Intracellular sodium ion, taas or baba? Okay, taas din, obviously. Kasi nga, na-block yung sodium, potassium ATP. So, walang lalabas na sodium ion ngayon. Okay? So, mananatili, retain sila inside the cardiac cell. So, yan ang effect ng digitalis, digitalis, based on its mechanism of action. Now, aside from, ayan, now, aside from the uh, mechanism of action that we discussed earlier, very diverse ang effects ng digoxin. Again, very diverse ang effects ng digoxin. In particular, uh, we have three, three related effects of digoxin. So, discuss na to sila. Tag sa tag sa. Starting with cardiac effects. Okay? Pag cardiac effects kasi, uh, it has something to do with the heart. So, yung effect ng digoxin related sa heart. Pag extra cardiac naman, uh, extra cardiac effect, ibig sabihin, ito yung mga effects ng digoxin outside the heart. And there are also relative action ng digoxin sa mga ions like potassium, calcium, and magnesium ion. So, first up is the cardiac effects of uh, digitalis, the digoxin. Meron tayong mechanical and electrophysiological effects. And again, under niya sa cardiac effects ng digoxin. Merong mechanical, merong, el merong electrophysiological effects. So, start tayo everyone sa mechanical effects of digoxin. So, take note, this agents increase contraction of cardiac sarcomere by enhancing the level of intracellular calcium. So, ito yung na-discuss kanina regarding sa iyang mechanism of action. Na because of sodium potassium ATP is blockade by digoxin, we tend to increase the um, calcium ion level in the intracellular membrane. Again, Moni atong na-discuss ganina ha, under Samoa. Now, with digoxin, upon blockade of sodium potassium ATPs, we tend to increase the intracellular uh, calcium ion or levels. Okay? And such increase of intracellular calcium ion 
it enhances then cardiac contraction. So, it enhances cardiac contraction. Also, it increases, di ba, kanina, sabi natin, increase yung intracellular sodium ion. And as mentioned earlier, as mentioned earlier, reduce ngayon yung calcium extrusion. Kasi nga, na-inhibit yung calcium extrusion. So, reduce yung calcium extrusion expulsion from the cardiac cell. So, that is the reason why mechanically, based on its mechanism of action, di ba? Mechanical. So, based niya siya sa mechanism of action ng digoxin. So, yung si digoxin, isa siyang inotropic agent. Okay? Based on mechanism of action. Also, still, still under mechanical effects, still under mechanical effects niya siya, because of increased cytoplasmic calcium or enhanced daw yung intracellular calcium level, ang tendency is, aside from enhance yung troponin, calcium complex interaction, ang mga excess calcium ion in the cytoplasm, it will be sequestered back in the SR, okay, via circa. Okay, so isa din yan sa mechanical effect ng digoxin. Dahil nga sa enhanced na cytoplasmic calcium, syempre may mga excess calcium dyan na hindi mag interact with a troponin calcium complex. Although, yung majority, it will interact with troponin calcium complex interaction for greater contraction. Siyempre, may mga excess calcium ion dyan. So, yung excess calcium ion sa cytoplasm, it will be sequestered back via uh, circa inside the uh, sy sarcoplasmic reticulum. Ang reason, uh, bakit binabalik sa circa yung excess calcium ion, that is because ang calcium na yun, it will be reserved. It will be reserved. Reserva sila para sa sunod na naanapod trigger calcium na mo enter via L-type calcium channel. Okay? Na pag may trigger calcium ulit na mus uh, enter sa cardiac cell via L-type calcium channel, marami na namang calcium ayon na ilalabas yung SR, which is responsible na naman for contraction. Kaya nga yung nakalagay dito, di ba? Ang kalagay dito, whenever a trigger calcium enters in the cardiac cell. So, those are the mechanical effects ng digoxin. So, para mas magets para mas magets yung um, statement sa mechanical effects ng digoxin, uh, summarize nato siya via illustrations. Ayan. So, for example, this is the cardiac cell. Okay? Yung cardiac cell to, wherein yung nasa taas, uh, dito, sa lo dito sa baba, ito yung inside ng cardiac cell, yung nasa taas, ayan yung outside ng cardiac cell. Okay? So, we have here, ito, itong channel na to, this is the L-type. L-type uh, calcium channel. Then, aside from that, we have here, ito naman yung um, sodium potassium uh, ATPs pump. So, ayan. And then, ito naman yung sodium calcium exchanger, yung NCX. So, ito yung mga important parts for the mechanical action ni digoxin. And then, inside, dito sa inside, of course, we have here the SR. Okay, so ito yung SR, yung sarcoplasmic reticulum. Siyempre, ano ba yung use niya? It sequesters. Diba? Responsible siya for sequestering many, many calcium. Many calcium ion inside the 
as well. Okay? So, ayan. So, ako ang gibuhat din to sa illustration. Ako yung summarize lang ang statement sa mechanical effects para madali lang siya dumduman with one illustration lang. So, inyo na din ma-describe ang mga mechanical effects ng digoxin. Okay, so we have this slide. Ayan. Okay, so ulitin natin ha. Sulat ko ulit. <coughs> Ayan. So again, this is the L-type calcium channel. This one is the sodium potassium ATPase. This is the NCX, the SR. Ano yung responsibility ng SR for sequestering many, many calcium ions. Okay, and then we have here itong parang gate na to. Ito naman yung uh, rayanodin. Diba? Yung rayanodin calcium channel. Okay, ayan. So, normally, normally, kapag merong calcium, kapag merong cytoplasmic na calcium, merong cytoplasmic calcium ion, okay, when this sodium potassium ATPase pump is being activated, okay, with that particular exchange of sodium and then potassium, ito yan yung uh, nangyayari kapag activated yung sodium potassium ATPase. So, that will result eventually to extrusion of a calcium ion via this NCX. But, yung ginagawa nga ni Dejoxin, excuse me, it will block. But it will block the sodium-potassium ATPase. And therefore, this exchanger will eventually be blocked as well. It will be rendered inactive. Kaya nga, walang calcium extrusion na mangyayari. Instead, kung walang calcium extrusion, syempre, dadami. Diba? Napapataas niya yung uh, calcium ion inside the cell. Also, napapataas niya yung sodium. Diba? Yung sodium ion na na-mention kanina. Kasi nga, inhibited yung sodium potassium ATPase. So, muna siya ang pasabot about sa first slide on the mechanical effect of digoxin. Sa first slide, again, sa first slide, the mechanical effect ng digoxin. Wherein, sabi diba doon, increase yung intracellular calcium, increase yung intracellular sodium, prevent, prevented yung expulsion of the calcium ion. Diba? Prevented yung paglabas ng calcium Ayun, so hindi siya lalabas. Now, ano naman yung ibig sabihin ng second slide? Okay, itong slide na to sa mechanical effects ng digoxin. Okay, ano daw yung ibig sabihin ng enhanced na sequestering of calcium ion by circa? Okay, ganito yun. Pag mataas, pag mataas yung calcium ion, di ba dalawa lang ang pwede? Dalawa lang yung pwedeng fate or destiny niya. Una, syempre, gagamitin for um, uh, interaction with the troponin, tropomyosin complex for cardiac contraction. Okay? So, ayan. Yan yung unang fate niya. But, take note na um, sobrang taas, sa sobrang taas ng calcium ngayon inside, 
ng cardiac cell, we have to understand na may mga excess calcium ion din na kailangan i-save. Diba? Kailangan i-save. So, ibabalik, ibabalik yung excess okay, calcium ions into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the one responsible for the sequestering of calcium ion diba, is via circa. Na-discuss ko to ha sa part 1 ng heart failure. So, ibabalik yan for reservation purposes. Again, ibabalik siya for reservation purposes. Nga nung i-reserve? Nga nung i-reserve ang mga excess calcium ion. Para, take note, bakit? Bakit kailangan i-reserve? Take note, para when the time na may trigger calcium ulit, may trigger calcium na naman na pumunta sa Rayano din channel, may pondo. Meron tayong pondo ng calcium na ilalabas. Okay? Na ilalabas ulit. That will be available which is responsible for contraction. Okay? So, yan yung ibig sabihin ng isa pang mechanical effect ng digoxin. Calcium ion is being sequestered by circa for reserve purposes. So, those are the mechanical effects of digoxin. So, base talaga siya sa mechan uh, mechanism of action, yung MOA. Now, moving forward, uh, still under cardiac effect, uh, let's proceed to the electrophysiological effects ng digoxin. So, ang bottom line lang din eh, ang bottom line sa electrophysiological effects, these effects are said to be dose-dependent. Okay, take note. Dose-dependent yung bottom line dito when we talk about electrophysiological effects of digoxin. Dose-dependent meaning it depends on the amount of the drug given what's gonna happen. What could be the response or result or effect. Now, kapag therapeutic dose is given, kapag therapeutic dose is given, ang effect ng digoxin ay first uh, enhance yung vagus stimulation. Enhance yung vagus stimulation. And second, uh, decrease yung sympathetic tone. Decrease yung sympathetic tone. So, both bottom line ng therapeutic dose, ang bottom line ng therapeutic dose because of enhance na vagus tone, na -e enhance yung para uh, sympathetic uh, response or parasympathetic action. Okay? And recalling, if you try to recall your, the parasympathetic action, diba, yung drug will enhance the sensitivity of the neurotransmitter acetylcholine to its muscarinic receptor. Eh. Isa yan sa mga receptor, diba, sa parasympathetic or cholinergic system. So, ibig sabihin lang ng enhanced sensitivity of acetylcholine to its muscarinic receptor, uh, pinabagal niya binabagal ng digoxin ang contraction ngayon ng heart at therapeutic dose. Okay? So, again, with therapeutic dose ng digoxin, bumabagal ang contraction ng ah, bumabagal yung contraction ng puso. So, ang Effect niya, therapeutically, is um, negative chronotropy. Diba? Ano yung ibig sabihin ng chronotropy? Medical term. Diba? Inotropy, ang inotropy, it has something to do with the a force of contraction. Pag chronotropy, it has something to do with the rate. Diba? Yung heart rate. Yung rate of cardiac contraction. Okay? So, yung ginagawa ni digoxin at therapeutic dose, chronotropy, or ano yung 
uh, term natin sa condition basta may negative chronotopy or slower heart rate than the normal one that is bradycardia. Okay, again, basta gani uh, rate. Again, we're not talking about the force of contraction. We're not talking about the force of contraction here. Kasi diba, yung inotropic, positive inotropy. Talaga siya. Positive inotropy talaga siya. Pero we're talking here about the electrophysiological effect. Gaano yung rate ngayon. Okay? Yung rate ngayon ng cardiac contraction. Kung um, mabagal ba or mabilis. So yung ginagawa ng dejoxin at therapeutic dose, yung effect niya therapeutically is bradycardia, that is negative chronotropy, slower heart rate than the normal. Okay? So ang point ani is, si dejoxin, again, ang point ani, si dejoxin, nagpapalakas siya ng tibok ng puso kasi positive inotropy. Malakas yung pumping, yes, positive inotropy, pero in a slower motion. Mabagal ang contraction. Mabagal yung rate of cardiac contraction. Kasi nga, negative chronotropy para sympathetic action is being stimulated. Okay? And take note, this only happens if therapeutic dose is given to the patient. Pero, take note, at higher dose, at higher dose, enhance. Okay? Enhance naman yung sympathetic flow. Okay? Enhance yung sympathetic flow. Kaya nga, at higher dose, ang effect is tachycardia. Tachycardia, or this is positive chronotropy. So, faster ngayon yung rate of cardiac contraction. Yung rate ha, yung rate ng cardiac contraction. Yun yung ibig sabihin ng tachycardia. And because of higher doses of digoxin, because of higher doses of digoxin, it could really result to ventricular uh, tachycardia or kaya naman other tachycardic na mga cases. That is why you really have to take note na kapag ang patient given with digoxin, yung concentration, plasma concentration ng digoxin in the body, it really has to be monitored. Okay? This is the reason why digoxin, isa siya sa mga gamot na mayroong narrow, very narrow nga therapeutic window. So, very much monitored ang patient taking digoxin. Now, <clears throat> This table naman, this table shows the concentration. It shows the concentration of digoxin with certain uh, interpretation. So, normal, ang normal effects ng digoxin kapag ang amount niya is 0. 0.5 to 1.5, uh, you will receive the normal effect of digoxin. And yan yung positive inotropy, negative chronotropy. Okay? So, yan yung therapeutic dose, normal effect. So, expected na uh, wala, walang ventricular tachycardia or mga adverse effects na uh, mangyayari. Okay? Now, kapag toxic na siya, kapag toxic na siya, kapag more than 2, okay, expected na uh, meron ng tachycardia effect. Kasi diba, at higher dose, uh, at higher dose, positive chronotropy na. <coughs> and, excuse me, and therefore, <coughs> excuse me, uh, tachycard, uh, merong mga tachycardic cases, ventricular tachycardia. Okay? Pero, again, kapag therapeutic dose, kapag therapeutic dose, brady, cardia, negative chronotropic effect. So, yung heart rate is lower. Maintenance dose naman is 0.25 and uh, to load 
or to initialize the amount of digoxin available for auction, you usually apply rapid digitalization. So, kanisha, kanisha, kaning last, uh, para ni ma-insure na ang right amount of digoxin will enter into the systemic circulation. So, overall, we are finished with cardiac effects. So, dumdumi, dumdumi na sa uh, sa cardiac effect, take note ha, uh, ingan to, ang, nga niyang naging flow natin sa uh, digoxin. Sa cardiac effect, we studied its cardiac effect. Diba? First, first thing, uh, sa cardiac effect, merong mechanical, tsaka merong electrophysiological. Uh, under sa mechanical, kapag mechanical, yan ay a positive inotropy. Diba? Based on the mechanism of action ng um, digoxin. Pinapalakas niya yung force ng contraction, yung tibok ng puso. Kapag, ano, electrophysiological, diba, dose-dependent. Dose-dependent. So, kapag therapeutic dose is given, uh, kapag therapeutic dose is given, negative chronotropy. Kapag um, toxic, higher dose at higher dose naman, uh, higher dose, syempre toxic na siya, meron ng positive uh, chrono. Yan yung tachycardia. Okay, so kung negative chrono, brady cardia. Okay, so take note, dapat monitored talaga yung level ng digoxin in the body. Okay, next, after cardiac effects, now let's uh, proceed to the extra cardiac effects. The extra cardiac effects naman. Uh, when we talk about extra cardiac effects of digoxin, these are the toxicities. We are referring here to the toxicities or adverse effects ng digoxin excuse me, outside the heart. Outside the heart. Pinaka-common pinaka-common is yung extra cardiac effect na sa gastrointestinal. Okay? Na, na target. Okay? Or yung GIT effects. Okay? Again, pinaka-common na extra cardiac effect is the gastrointestinal effect such as anorexia, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea. Visual disturbances also, this may happen wherein ang kaka-experience sa patient is yellow-green visual discoloration of objects. Yellow-green visual discoloration of objects. And in some cases, rare rin siya, very rare, uh, among men na cases, among men na cases is gynecomastia. Gynecomastia. So that's it for the extra cardiac effects of digoxin. Now, pinaka common case pa rin, yung pinaka common case pa rin ng digoxin ha, Digoxin therapy, pinaka-common case na kinakamatay ng patient is cardiac adverse effect pa rin. Yung cardiac adverse effect pa rin, especially yung ventricular tachycardia na effect in which nangyayari again at higher dose. Na nangyayari ang tachycardia at higher dose. Now, we have to take note as well, we have to take note as well na ang activity ng digoxin activity ng digoxin in the heart is related sa imbalances or alterations of ions in the body. That is why, knowing interactions with uh, potassium, calcium, magnesium, for example, we could check if digoxin ba in the body is already toxic or hindi. Okay? So, una, with potassium. With potassium. Tandaan, kapag may high, high level of potassium ion or may hyperkalemia okay di ba taas yung level ng potassium in the blood hyperkalemia ang patient it can reduce it can reduce activity of digoxin okay while kapag naman hypokalemia kapag hypokalemia naman or baba ang potassium ion level sa blood ng patient, that would further, that would further enhance the action of digoxin. 
Okay, again, with hyperkalemia, uh, somehow, hindi siya nagko-contribute sa enhancement ng uh, effect ng digoxin. In fact, meron siyang reduction. Nere-reduce niya somehow yung activity ni digoxin. Pero pag hypokalemia, delikado. Kasi nga, na-enhance niya yung effect ng digoxin. That's why we really need to carefully monitor electrolyte level of patient whenever the patient is taking digoxin. So, yan yung ibig sabihin ng interactions with these ions. Okay? Lalong-lalo na, okay, very important na i-monitor talaga yung uh, patient taking digoxin, especially pag uh, yung patient meron siyang tinitake na other drugs that could alter electrolytes. Like, for example, diuretics. Diuretics like loop diuretics. Thiazide diuretics. Diba? Yung loop tsaka thiazide diuretics, they causes hypokalemia. Okay? So, kailangan, kailangan i-monitor yun ang potassium level. Because with hypokalemia na state, pwedeng mag-enhance yung action ng digoxin and with enhanced digoxin na action hindi mamomonitor pwedeng magkaroon ng toxic concentration okay ng digoxin sa blood and again pwedeng magkaroon ng tachycardia at higher plasma concentration ng digoxin also kapag ang patient take note kapag ang patient may hyper calcemia. Siyempre, pag hypercalcemia, taas yung calcium ion in the blood. So, this also increases, this also increases um, severity of toxic effects ng digoxin. Why? Kasi, di ba, pag may mataas na calcium ion level, expected na marami yung trigger calcium ion. Marami yung available na uh, extracellular calcium ion na pwedeng maging trigger calcium papasok sa cardiac cell. Based on the concept natin about trigger calcium, di ba? We suppose na with trigger calcium, kapag nag-enter siya sa cardiac cell, we suppose na lalakas talaga yung tibok ng puso. That will result to positive inotropy contraction. Again, with hypercalcemia, nagkakos din siya ng positive inotropy. Okay? Plus, si digoxin, positive inotropy din yung effect. So, additive na ngayon yung effect. Enhance ngayon yung toxicity therefore, if my hypercalcemia ang patient. So, meron talagang interaction yung digoxin uh, level in the blood with the electrolytes level in the body. Okay, so pag may hypercalcemia, ang patient enhance yung, pwedeng mag-enhance yung toxicity ng digoxin. Kanina, hypokalemia ang nagpapatoxic. Hypercalcemia as well. And for magnesium, magnesium, recall na ang magnesium, uh, inyo lang i-recall about magnesium, di ba? This is a natural um, calcium channel blocker. Okay? So, CCB. Calcium channel blocker. Natural. This is the natural one. Na calcium channel blocker. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, uh, kapag uh, taas masyado yung calcium ion, tapos mababa, meron kang hypomagnesemia, mababa yung magnesium ion in the uh, in the body okay, or in the blood, in the plasma, syempre, you will expect na walang mag inhibit sa enhancement ng intracellular calcium ion. Okay? So, walang calcium blockade na effect ngayon si magnesium kasi nga mababa yung level niya. Okay? Ayan. So, nai-enhance yung calcium effect. Okay? Kapag may hypomagnesemia. So, parang inversely proportional sila. Kasi nga, natural calcium channel blocker siya. 
Kapag merong magnesium sa blood, uh, baba yung calcium. Kasi nga, binablock ni magnesium yung calcium. Therefore, kapag mababa ngayon yung magnesium, taas si calcium. Okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So, ayan. So, again ha, kung natural CCD siya, kung ano man yung effect ni calcium, kabaliktaran lang kay magnesium. Okay? Blocker man siya. Blocker siya. So, opposite. Indirectly proportional talaga sila. Kaya kapag ang patient may hypo, may hypo, magnesemia, nagkukos. Ulit siya ng further toxicity. Nagkukos ng further toxicity. So, that's all for the interactions of uh, digoxin with uh, potassium ion. So, kapag may hypo, kalimia ang patient in particular with calcium kapag may hypercalcemia ang patient and with magnesium kapag may hypo magnesemia ang patient okay also mm, we have drug interactions here okay kana siya we have drug interactions with digitalis glycosides for example uh, drug interaction is shahay sulat drug interactions and other uh, for example may mga medications tayo na when taken concomitantly okay when taken concomitantly concurrent therapy yung digitalis uh, or digoxin may enhance their cardiac toxicity example uh, itong arrow above we have amiodarone erythromycin kinidine uh, tetracycline verapamil, all these agents could increase digitalis concentration when taken together. So, na-enhance nila more yung concentration ng digoxin in the blood. Okay? So, ano yung magiging result kapag enhance, okay, yung digitalis concentration, enhance talaga yung cardiotoxicity ng digoxin. Whereas, yung steroids naman, ito, sa baba, Steroids like corticosteroids, thiazides, and loop. Yun ang yung sabi ko sa thiazides at loop diuretics in particular. Diba? Nagkakos sila ng hypokalimia. Tignan? Decreased level of blood potassium. Ano yung sabi natin kanina as discussed earlier? Kapag may hypokalimia ang patient. Diba? That is a factor that could increase the cardiac toxicity of digoxin. So, there could be enhanced cardiac toxicity then enhance potential cardio toxicity now when there is certain problem when there is certain uh, digitalis toxicity in particular ang greatest risk you dire is yung ventricular tachycardia yung ventricular tachycardia na kapag nangyari ang ventricular tachycardia, meron tayong iba-ibang um, paraan para ma-manage ito. So, number one, again, ito, ang slide na to ha, it has something to do with the uh, treatment of digitalis toxicity. How do we manage um, ventricular tachycardia which is the greatest risk of having digitalis toxicity? So, withdrawal. Okay, meaning you have to stop as in discontinue, stop the giving of digitalis digoxin to the patient. Stop using hypokalemic na mga diuretic agents like loop at yung thiazide diuretics. Kasi nga, again, kapag ang gamot ng kukos ng hypokalemia, uh, that could enhance the, the toxicities of digoxin. So, stop it as well. And then, electrolytes. Electrolytes level, these are very critical also during therapy, Digitox, uh, digoxin, I'm sorry, digoxin therapy, very critical yung electrolyte level. Kaya, we can correct electrolyte imbalances like, for example, a give, give potassium chloride. Diba? Potassium chloride, this is an electrolyte of potassium ion. Diba? So, kapag nag-replenish ka, ng potassium ion in the body tataas. Kung baga tataasan niya ngayon yung potassium ion in the body. So, kung baga it acts here 
in here, yung pagkasong plural, it acts as an, as an antagonist in the action of digoxin. Kasi magkakaroon ng hyperkalimia yung uh, patient niya. Okay? Ina-counteract, kumbaga niya yung hypokalimia. Magnesium replacement as well. Okay? Very important din siya. Kasi nga, magnesium ayon isa siyang natural calcium channel blocker. So, uh, maka-counter uh, maka niya yung effect ng calcium. Diba? Maka-counter niya yung effect ng calcium. Okay? So, kapag, that is kapag yung magnesium ayon mataas yung level niya in the body. Okay? Also, we have um, anti-arrhythmic agents. Ayan. Paano siya? We also have anti-arrhythmic agents. Mm -mm. Example, uh, we have phenytoin, lidocaine, propane, and hyperpranolol, atropine. So, these are agents that could counteract as well the effect of digoxin at high doses ng digoxin. Okay? Kasi nga, at high doses, yung digoxin can cause tachycardia. So, madiscuss na ito na yung mga anti-arrhythmic agents sa next lesson. After heart, after this um, discussion, so part 2 ng heart failure, uh, anti-arrhythmic na ta. Okay, next. Uh, the most... Okay, ayan. Now, the most uh, advanced na agent during digitalist toxicity, most advanced ha, na agent during digitalist toxicity, pwede natin gamitin, is yung digibind. Digibind. Although, I'm not sure if this is available in the Philippines. Okay? Yung digibind, ibig sabihin, digoxin. Digibind, digoxin binding antibody. Digoxin binding antibody. Particularly, this agent is used for life-threatening na mga digoxin poisoning. Okay? And those patients that suffer from shock okay, or cardiac arrest, and other related conditions to digoxin. Okay? So, taken all together, this is the end of cardiac glycosides. Okay? Which is a positive inotrope. So, recap tayo. Recap tayo, di ba? Sa cardiac glycoside like digoxin, isa siyang positive inotropic agent. That is for its mechanical effect. And yung electrophysiologic effect niya, kapag therapeutic dose, diba, negative chronotropy, kapag higher dose, positive chronotropy, tachycardia. Then, we also discuss its extra cardiac effect and yung interactions with electrolytes. Basta, take note lang yun nga, important sa digitalis, i-monitor na to ang level ng uh, digitalis in the plasma. Uh, next, we have, ayan, we have the beta-1 agonists. Okay. Beta-1 agonists, in particular, the drug uh, dobutamine. Again, beta-1 agonist, in particular, this is the drug dobutamine. Dobutamine. Ang dobutamine, isa rin siyang uh, inotropic agent. Diba? Kasamahan niya si cardiac glycoside at by peridines. Positive inotrope din siya. And actually, na-discuss ni under sa inyong pharmacology 1, under ANS drug, ang dobutamin. Isa siyang ANS drug. So, recall or review na to. Ang ginagawa ni dobutamin, ang ginagawa ni dobutamin, sabi nga dito, beta-1 agonist. So, gina-activate niya ang beta-1 receptor. Take note. Dobutamine activator siya. Stimulator siya ng beta-1 receptor. Remember, ang beta-1 receptor uh, in the heart, particularly beta-1 receptor in the heart, uh, if activated yan, if activated, um, that will uh, release, that will release CAMP, CAMP secondary messenger. Okay, which is responsible for the activation of the enzyme protein kinase A, okay, or the PKA, in which, kapag na-activate yung enzyme na to, diba, that can further 
enhance the entry of this trigger calcium inside the cardiac cell. Of course, kapag enhance ngayon yung entry ng trigger calcium, dadami. Dadami ngayon yung calcium uh, inside the cell. Mm -hmm. Dadami ngayon yung calcium inside the cell na lalabas mula sa SR, sa sarcoplasmic reticulum. And such increase of cytoplasmic calcium ions will ultimately result to contraction. Okay, so positive inotrope yung effect. If i-recall ninyo uh, ang ANS drugs, i-recall ninyo yung ANS drugs, ang gamit yun ni dobutamin, masulat yun, masulat yun na siya sa inyong notes na ang pinaka pinanggagamitan ni dobutamin, dobutamin is for acute heart failure. This is used in the management of acute heart failure. So again, clinically used siya in the management of acute heart failure. Okay? So, again, ulit lang, selective beta 1, agonist siya. It can increase the cardiac output with a decreased and ventricular filling pressure. Now, ngayon, ang difference lang nila with digoxin, again, kung i-compare nyo si dobutamin with the first positive inotrope na agent na na-discuss with this which is digoxin, si dobutamin positive chronotropic agent siya. Even at therapeutic dose. Again, si dobutamin positive uh, chronotropic um, agent siya even at therapeutic dose. Whereas ang digoxin, di ba kanina, si digoxin, positive chronotropic lang siya at higher, at higher dose. And finally, here we have the phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors. These are actually the bipyridines. Okay, yung kanina sa table. Bipyridines. Okay, kanina sa introduction table ng heart failure drugs. Ito yung mga bipyridines. Bipyridines. Yung phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors. So, ito yung MOA nila. MOA nila, yung bipyridines, ginablock nila ang, ang enzyme na phosphodiesterase 3 enzyme. Ginablock nila. So, related na kaya po ni siya sa atong na-discuss ganina nga slide under the butamin. Okay? Ang importance, ano ba yung importance muna ng phosphodiesterase 3? Ano ba yung importance ng phosphodiesterase 3? Wala munang gamot ha. Huwag muna natin ipasok yung inhibitors. Ano muna yung phosphodiesterase 3? Uh, si phosphodiesterase 3 na enzyme uh, that metabolizes tingnan, tingnan yung pathway, diba? It metabolizes the secondary messenger camp into its inactive form uh, AMP. So again, as enzyme na PDE3 ginametabolize niya ginainactivate niya ang CAMP. So yan yung action ng enzyme PDE3. Okay, gina inactivate niya, gina degrade, gina metabolize niya. Now, si CAMP, recall, recall na yung CAMP, okay, this is very important for contraction to happen. Diba? Recall na ang CAMP, it activates the PKA enzyme, tapos yung PKA enzyme na na-enhance ng CAMP, it will allow, it will enhance entry of trigger calcium causing the end result contraction. However, kapag na-metabolize, na-metabolize ni phosphodiesterase 3, ang CAMP pluser ngayon yung contraction na mangyayari. Okay? Kaya nga, we have this so-called, so insert na natin yung drug, we have this so-called phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors. Okay? And that is to block. Ang ginagawa nito is to block the enzyme phosphodiesterase 3 para pigilan yung metabolism ng CAMP. Okay? So, si phosphodiesterase 3 will be blocked para hindi ma-metabolize yung CAMP. Thus, with this uh, group of agents, PDE3 inhibitors, uh, tataas ngayon, di ba, yung level ng CAMP
excuse me, and if taas ang camp level, dadami ngayon yung trigger calcium na papasok into the cardiac cell, greater na yun yung contraction, positive. Diba? Positive inotropic effect. So, that's for the mechanism of action ng bipyridine. Bakit siya positive inotrope din ng mga bipyridines? So, contraction pa rin. Enhance the force of myocardial contraction. Inotropy. Positive inotropy. So, examples of bipyridines, phosphodiesterase 3 inhibitors, we have enamrinone, milrinone. And just like the butamine, uh, just like the butamine, uh, meron din siyang positive uh, chronotropic uh, effect. Okay, parehas lang sila. Meron din siyang positive chronotropic effect even at, itake nyo na lang, even at therapeutic dose. Even at therapeutic dose. Okay, pero again, si Dijoxin ha, si Dijoxin, yung positive chronotropic effect niya is at higher dose. At higher dose. So, si bipyridine, si bipyridine, siya kasi dubutamine, parehas lang is sila actually, pinapataas nila yung CAMP, yung CAMP levels. With bipyridine, phosphodiesterase inhibitor sila, yung ginagawa nila para itaas yung CAMP levels, yung CAMP levels, is ginablock nila yung phosphodiesterase. Three. And upon blocking, Phosphodiesterase 3, pigil ang metabolism ng CAMP. So, nare-retain yung level ng CAMP. Kay dobutamine, ganun din. Pinapatas niyo yung CAMP level via uh, enhancing the synthesis ng CAMP. Kasi yung dobutamine, isang beta-1 agonist. So, talagang uh, pan-activation ng beta-1 as a GS link na uh, receptor. Uh, nagre-release siya. nag enhance ng release ng uh, CAMP messenger. But via beta-1 activation. Okay. Then, for the adverse effects, and for the adverse effects, please take note na lang. Please take note of this adverse effects ng phosphodiesterase inhibitor. So, basahin nyo lang to. Take note nyo lang to. Okay. So, overall, we are done with inotropic agents. We're done with the positive inotropes. Recalling them, we have cardiac glycoside, the digoxin, uh, beta, beta 1 uh, activator, beta 1 agonist, the dobutamine, and the bipyridine, say, number known, milrinone. Now, meron din tayong mga gamot that addresses um, the neuro humoral uh, mechanisms that occur during heart failure. Kung baga, tinatarget nila yung pag-release or pag-synthesize ng endogenous compounds like norepinephrine, uh, angiotensin 2, endothelin, etc. Okay, that uh, has something to do with the neurohumoral mechanisms. Remember, itong mga gamot na to, these are anti-hypertensives din. Okay, which is employed so heart failure as first line therapies, first line drugs for heart failure. So example nga dito, we have diuretics, ACE inhibitors, ARBs, aldosterone antagonists, and uh, beta blocker. So no problem with their mechanism of action. Diba? No problem with their mechanism of action because na-discuss na natin to under hypertension. So, kung ako pang idugang dire ilahang mechanism of action tagtatag sa samot na nga mataas ang ato ang uh, lecture for heart failure. Okay, so iscan lang ninyo. Just read this out. Scan ninyo inyohang uh, notes about the mechanism of action of these antihypertensives under heart failure drugs. Okay, so make sure wala ninyo nalimitan yung mowa ng mga antihypertensives. Kaya ma-apply gihapon siya dari ana lesson hanggang sa anti arrhythmics so for the diuretics uh, for the diuretics ang mechanism nila remember is to reduce uh, venous pressure and ventricular preload diba yung preload kasi nga yung diuretics yung ginagawa nila mainly di ba pinapa enhance yung urinary excretion so yung blood volume uh, yung blood volume ginapa baba nila yung 
blood volume. Okay, specific example ng mga diuretics, ang ginagamit is uh, ito, spironolactone. Ayan. Again, yung specific example sa mga diuretics, ginagamit is spironolactone. Isang potassium sparing. Okay, diuretic. Spironolactone. Ang maganda kasi kay spironolactone, this diuretic, di ba, prevents uh, potassium wasting. It prevents potassium wasting. So, pinipigilan niya yung potassium wasting. And ano ba yung importance kapag pinipigilan niya yung potassium wasting? Taas ba or baba yung potassium ion sa blood? Pinipigilan niya yung potassium wasting. So, taas. So, magkakaroon ng hyper kalimya. Kumbaga. So, hindi bababa yung potassium ion sa blood. Maganda to kasi hindi sila nagkukos ng hypokalimia. Diba? Hindi hypokalimia kundi hyperkalimia. And this is a beneficial uh, good effect. Especially kapag ang patient is taking digoxin. Diba? Kapag ang patient taking with digoxin, very good niya siya. Beneficial niya siya nga effect. Kasi uh, with hypo, with hypo kanina, diba, gina enhance niya yung severity Inenhance niya yung cardiotoxicity ng digoxin. So, para ma-counteract okay, yung enhancement sa cardiotoxicity with hypokalimia when a, per, when a patient is taking digoxin, uh, you can counteract that via uh, taking diuretics. Okay? Pinapataas kasi niya yung potassium ion uh, level. Remember, ang digoxin nagkukos siya ng toxicity okay, kapag hypokalimia ang patient. So, with hyperkalimia, very good. Maganda yung effect na to. Okay? Kung ang patient taking with digoxin. Okay? Maganda yung combination kumbaga. Walang problema. Ngayon, ang problema lang natin sa diuretics, what if yung diuretics na binigay is a loop. ba? Diba? Kapag loop diuretics or thiazide diuretics. So, this diuretics has hypokalemic adverse effect. Okay, that is why usually if loop thiazide is given, this is used in combination with potassium sparing diuretics. Okay, this is used in combination with potassium sparing diuretics. Now this figure naman, now this figure, it explains the applications okay, of ACE inhibitors and ARBs. Okay, applications ng ACE inhibitors and ARBs. Arbs. Recall na na-discuss na natin yung MOA. Okay? Na-discuss na natin yung MOA ng mga ACE inhibitors ARBs. Wherein, in general, pinipigilan di ba nila yung fluid retention, yung vasoconstriction, yung remodeling also. Aside from that, with ACE inhibitors, with ACE inhibitors, ina-enhance na yung uh, bradykinin levels. So, in short, i-review lang din ninyo. I-review ninyo yung RAAS pathway for the application of uh, ACE inhibitors and ARBs. Yung point dito, ha, yung point dito, for this group of agents na antihypertensives, yung tinatarget nila, wala silang, uh, wala silang inotropic effect. Yung tinatarget nila is yung neuro, yung moral mechanism. Okay? So, mga unloader medication, kumbaga sila. Dine-decrease nila yung preload, dine-decrease uh, nila yung uh, workload, Okay, ng heart. Yung burden sa heart. Okay? Now, just take note of these adverse effects. Na-discuss na naman ako na sila last time, di ba? Under sa anti-hypertensive. So, just uh, recall. I-scan over your notes about anti-hypertensives. And then, for ARBs, okay? For ARBs, Examples are losartan, erbisartan, candesartan. So, ito yung usually used for the management of heart failure. Then, for vasodilators, for vasodilators naman, uh, na-discuss na po na to ni. Di ba? Na-discuss na to ni. So, paspas lang, no? Paspas lang ang ato ang lecture ani na part. Remember ang combination. Na-remember ba yung combination ng isosorbide, ISDN, and also hydralazine, which is beneficial among African-American patients. Okay, so, clinically effective din siyang combination for the management of heart failure among black Americans. Take note, among black Americans. Effective din siya na 
combination. And the other vasodilator, like CCBs, di ba, amlodipine. CCBs niya siyang uh, vasoselective. Okay, kasi DHP. Di ba? DHP, uh, CCBs, vasoselective sila. Alpha, prazosin, the alpha-1 blocker. So, these are other vasodilators. So, this particular vasodilators, they target the blood vessels. Okay? Neseritide. Neseritide, it can also induce diuresis. So, pinapababa niya yung blood volume. So, baba yung workload. Lesser workload sa heart. For bosentan, tezosentan, uh, these are endothelin. Take note, this is endothelin antagonists. Okay? Antagonist na siya. Okay? Ayan. Masa nyo na-remember about endothelin? Endothelin sa mga neurohumoral response ng katawan during heart failure. Diba? It causes vasoconstriction. So, by using bosentan, tezosentan, sabi dito, antagonist ng endothelin. So, binablock nila yung vasoconstriction effect ng endothelin. Preventing the neurohumoral response. And finally, uh, beta blockers. Beta blockers. Ayan, if we think, if we will think uh, initially, we will think it initially when we talk about beta blockers, yung initial thought, yun na to, yes, hindi to effective. Hindi to effective for heart failure, yung mga beta blockers. Okay? Let's say, or let's say, um, contraindicated yung drugs na beta blockers sa heart failure. Kasi nga, ba? In general, in general, good beta blockers, they are uh, cardiac depressant. Di ba? Always man ang gina-emphasize na cardiac depressant yung uh, beta blocker. So, may heart failure na, gina-depress pa yun yung heart, so delikado. Okay? But please take note, please take note na sa mga bagay-bagay na mga exception. Okay? Not yung mga exception here. So, natin mga selected beta blocker agents that could actually reduce mortality rate in heart failure patients. So, apat lang yun. Apat lang po available in the market na beta blockers used for heart failure. So, sino yung apat na yun? We have bisoprolol. I-take note na lang ha. Bisoprolol. Bisoprolol. Metoprolol. Uh, carvidolol. Carvi, carvi, delol. And lastly, nebivolol. Nebivolol. Okay, for metoprolol, ang dami kasing salt form ng metoprolol. Paka-take note na yung salt form, specific salt form ng metoprolol used for heart failure is yung succinate. Isumpay lang, metoprolol, succinate. Familiar man siguro sa inyo. Metoprolol, succinate, yan yung salt, salt salt form ng metoprolol used for heart failure. So, ito lang yung apat ha. Apat na beta blocker na specifically can block, okay, can be used for heart failure. And yung ginagawa nila, of course, they block uh, beta 1 um, activation, particularly yung beta-mediated RAS pathway. Okay? Kasi pag na-activate yung RAS pathway, another burden yan sa heart. So, yung ginagawa ng apat na to, yung tinatarget nila is yung uh, RAS pathway. Yung beta-mediated na RAS pathway. Okay? So, pwede sila for heart failure, for targeting neuro, humoral response of the body. Now, meron silang, um, take note, meron din silang anti-arrhythmic properties, antioxidant. Uh, properties. And in some cases, may upregulation activity sila that could further enhance contraction of the heart. Okay? Now, this table naman, this table, uh, it summarizes the different so, ayan, para makita. Ayan. Okay. This table specifically, okay, it summarizes the different steps, different steps in the prevention and treatment of heart failure. So, as observed, as observed, based on the ACC, 
AHA, ACC AHA, na guidelines, ang first step, diba? step one. First step is to use antihypertensive agents. Kaya nga, control hypertension. So, that is by using antihypertensive agent. Kasi nga, yung antihypertensive, sila yung magkocontrol sa mga neurohumoral mechanism to be able to lessen the burden of the heart. And kapag lumalala na, diba? kapag lumalala na yung Mm. Ano yan? Yung stage ng heart failure, okay? Mas tumataas na yung level or stage ng patient, okay? Or case ng patient with having having heart failure. So that's the time na aside from that antihypertensive agents, binibigyan na sila ng positive inotropic agent, okay? Which is uh digoxin. Digoxin. And yung worst na step, okay, step 11, pinaka-worst, cardiac, may cardiac transplant na. So, failing na good ang, failed na good yung heart, okay, to provide the needs of peripheral tissues ng body. So, yan yung mga pharmacological interventions. Yan yung mga pharmacological interventions for the patients with heart failure. Now, aside from this pharmacological uh, pharmacological na interventions, we also have non-pharmacologic uh, therapy, non-pharmacologic therapy, wherein we can have some counseling, some advices given to the patient without involving drugs. So, it can help manage the disease. Okay, for example, of course, compliance. Compliance diet, ensure na adequate yung health, okay? yung general nutrition ng patient. Salt, avoid high salt. Mm, fluid intake as well. Okay? Restrict fluid intake. Alcohol, okay? advice na drink alcohol moderately. moderately. Smoking, diba? kung pwede, discontinue. Okay? Discontinue. Smoking, then, of course, having regular exercise. That is very much encouraged. Okay? So, overall, that is the end of drugs for heart failure.